So as I said, welcome to Breakfast and Dragons, our little morning, I got my coffee and my Vader mug right here, um, a little morning D&D game that we do on Saturdays where we like to say that the characters are made up, but the trauma's real, just like the audio trauma that we're having right now. Um, so I'm going to pass off um, our little housekeeping announcements to Jacob, and Jacob can handle that. Right, so uh, as we announced on Tuesday, we have a slew of new features across our stream as little Kaida here on the screen has invaded literally everything. Uh, she is in our emotes, she is in our badges, she is a bot in chat that will respond if you type exclamation point commands. A uh, number of different things there, so check them out. Uh, we will continue to train her as we go. Uh, there are a few commands that are specific to subscribers, so if you want full access to everything she can do, give us a subscribe. Um, also, we are working towards a new goal where we will unlock another emote at 25 subscribers. So, uh, that is the spiel of all that business. We had a previous goal earlier this week that some friends jumped over from another stream and helped us smash thus verily. And uh, as such, we will be doing a giveaway today uh, for a free miniature from Eldritch Foundry. So stick around with us through the break. We will do a raffle in chat for that and then announce it after the break. So hope you stick with us. All right, and on that note, um, I think that's everything, right? Uh, that All is right. everything I've got. I are, they, are we streaming the Dungeon Con game? I don't have a ton of information on that just yet, so I was Perfect. holding off. Um, cool. So uh, more fun news down the pipeline uh, for our group. We will announce as soon as we have more information on that. Ta-da. Some of us might be participating in Dungeon Con. I might be trying to make a Scooby-Doo character. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so, some of us will be participating in Dungeon Con alongside Astral uh, Virtual Tabletop. Uh, what I don't know is whether or not it will be publicly available or if you have to have a uh, ticket to the con to view it or how that works. So I don't have those details yet. But <clears throat> So, on those notes, we step into the Dark World of Stratera. So, as we last left off, the party stuck on the Providence Islands, waiting for the sailing whaling ships to come back so they can leave, uh, decided to investigate the ruins of Broken Gate, the remains of an ancient Arcadian watchtower. The uh, Interplanier Watchtower. Um, upon delving down into the depths of Broken Gate, they found what was called the Heretic's Maze, a seemingly a structure built for the imprisonment and torture of mages. Having faced uh, many challenges going in and the undead denizens within the maze, the, parties, uh, the party faced against the guardian of the maze itself, a construct or giant metal ball that... Luckily, they defeated, but probably emotionally defeated them as they are now recovering at the center of the maze, and we will pick up from there. Uh, and is just sitting on this step of this altar at the middle of the maze, whatever this is, uh, just crushed. <clears throat> and bullet ridden. And, yeah, yeah. Is everyone all right? Uh, it is uh, relative, I think. Do we know what this place is? What is awful? It, well, yes, it, it is certainly that. Uh, finally, finally being able to turn my attention to the room, can I take a look at, like, what what exactly is in the center of the room here? Is it an altar? So, in the center of this room sets very similar rock that you guys have seen that the, the, the coffin, the imprisoning coffins were made out of. This basalt-like natural rock that just kind of is different from the sandstone that the tomb is made out of. Um, it's 
two small high rising steps that lead up to a center dais with a very uh, familiar ward like at the beginning of this tomb um, various debris and remains of candles and uh, objects of ritual lay around this altar that's set in the middle of this tomb um Similar to what you've seen coming into the tomb, remarkably free of dust and debris. Eerily clean. Uh, what is that you're holding, Oliver? I, it was... Uh, we've been looking for the Guardian's heart, yes? I, this, it was what was in it. Um, what you have in your hand, roughly the size of a torch, is a gold-laced, um, a gold rod with obsidian-like lines going through it. Capped at the top with a gold plate, and attached to the gold plate is a very rough cut, ruby-like gem. May I see that for a moment? He hands it over. Uh, trying to focus himself from his cluttered and distracted self, uh, Ben will sit down on the floor and set the, the rod in front of him, but it just kind of hovers there, held aloft by his telekinetic abilities. Um, and uh, will reach into the rift in time, his kind of extra-dimensional uh, carry-on luggage, and pull out his spell book. Uh, and start rifling through notes, and look, and trace a, a sigil on the ground that starts glowing, and rifle through his notes again, and he'll spend ten minutes to originally cast Identify on it. Okay. Well, no, excuse me. So, over the course of this, the taking in um, the weave around you and weaving it around to find the magical properties of this item in your hands, you do notice that there's been a difference um, since you came to Stratera, since you stepped through the Dreamlands. Um, it's almost like if the weave was a breath, like taking a breath, you went from sea level to being on top of Everest. It's still there, but it's a struggle to breathe. It's a struggle to pull magic, as if magic is weak, weakened in this land. Is um, it even harder inside here than it was outside? No. You feel the weave stronger here. It harder than it was. Yeah. When you were up on the surface, it's a little harder to pull from the magic. Here... It's just as natural as being back in the dreamlands. Uh, as I'm going through my notes, and kind of rifling through, and, and uh, eventually the, the spellbook goes back in, and then Ben's hands unfold uh, as he continues through the ritual. Uh, it's almost like the little motes of light are moving on their own, and his eyes are closed and glazed over. Um, or his eyes are unfocused and glazed over. Uh, do I have enough presence of mind to be able to do one small verbal aside while I do this ritual? Um, well, I was about to finish. As the ritual finishes, this rod is not magical. Okay. Uh, so, just during that time... I lost my train of thought. It's too early. I apologize. Continue. So. This uh, has no innate properties, but uh, Killian, do you feel that? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. It is like 
being able to breathe again. Uh, the weave, the the source of power. Do you feel a difference? I um, I reach I reach out to um, I cast like the light spell, uh, and like you see my face kind of like light up like oh, yeah you, I do. Killian, you you would have kind of noticed this since you've stepped into the maze. Um, spells that took your lifetime to learn because it was very hard um, to learn magic and to pull from the minuscule amount of weave that's left in Stratera and learning how to harness it and tap into it. It comes ridiculously easy now. It's like um, it's like a runner having weights on its legs his entire life and then taking them off. Rock Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. Um, uh, so, sorry, what did Ben just ask me? If, if you feel that, the difference. Uh, yeah, I thought, uh, thought it was just, uh, adrenaline or something, but I see what you mean now. Hearth, you... S you know this tower better than us when it stood, at least, uh... This was supposed to be the gateway to the Shadowfell, yes? The watchtower on the entrance. I'm not entirely sure about that, Bill. Um, is there... I'm, my recollection is not necessarily that this... It was called the Shadow Tower, but... For me, it is not confirmed yet exactly why that is the case. The, our, the common knowledge back then, and Ben would know part of this, since you and Ben both come from the Arcadian, ancient Arcadian Empire. Um, we old, y'all. They built watchtowers upon interconnections of ley lines that were thin spots between the planes. Um, they called them watchtowers, but they were um, places of power where they could draw they could draw potential from other other realms and other planes, possibly crossing over if if they could experiment and find a way. So, Arthur is going to then answer Ben's question. This place is one of many watchtowers, as they were called, to study, monitor, and possibly even cross the plains where ley lines were the weakest. Here, I would assume, has ties to the shadow fall. Uh, the, the weave is removed or cut off from Stratera, but here, uh, all along the watchtower, you're not the, Jube. <laughs> the weave is, is stronger. It is as if we're, I don't know, can touch it again. And Ben just waves his hand, and uh, you see just this spectral glow uh, royal after him essentially using Mage Hand and making it visible for a moment. Uh, this... That's just... Interesting. For just the first moment since we've gotten to the tower, even outside, you see, like, a spark of curiosity on Ben's face. We should... Probably not sit here for too long. I'm gonna look at all three of them and be like, for those of us who don't speak magic ease, what's the shadow plane and what are you talking about? It, um, hmm. Other worlds. Put it simply. 
Like where I found Ben. Like yes. where you found Ben? It is another plane. That it lies... If you look at the sphere theory, anyway, uh, it lies kind of below the material plane. A dark echo or dark shadow of the material plane. There are other theories of how the planes lie, but... Um. Hmm. It begs the question for me, Bill. Do I feel a difference in my, in the source of my power connection? How does the divine seem to reflect in this place? Have I felt a difference? You, you, be worshiping the Everlight. You haven't really noticed a difference. Um, since your reawakening, everything's felt normal to you. So Hearth is going to be taking this conversation in between Killian and Ben. Have you sensed the weave to be weaker in your time? It. You've missed a lot. Hell, I've missed a lot. I'm gonna. <clears throat> kind of lean forward and say before a group of wanderers for a better term uh, took me to where I found Ben I had thought that magic was gone that is what we have been told no one no one could use it. No one could access it. There were just little pieces, and then she touches her hat. Like, that allowed us to... to harness it. Killian, you are familiar with what she's talking about. It's, um, it's a form of um, magical leeching, as it is. And that's those that can't touch the weave if they were lucky enough to find an ancient relic or a magical item from before the Age of Absolution. They could tap into the remnants of the weave that's attached to the item and cast spells. So, is I was able to cast magic before that happened to me, though, right? Yes, from working with your uncle. So, so would I have remem would I remember being able to cast magic and it being very difficult and then finding that artifact and it becoming easier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. This is the new information for Derek. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, in game, I'll explain that all. So, um, so I, I know that y'all have been around for a while. I'm looking at Ben and Hearth. When I was growing up, learning magic, uh, it didn't come easy. Why? There's a college for it. Um, put a lot of time into it. Uh, but um, on a dig, shortly after I found uh, my friend here and I tapped the medallion on my chest, things became easier. He says right. medallion, but it's actually an ancient Arcadian a coin. It's a coin, yeah. Ah. Uh. I'm very interested in continuing this conversation. Uh, but uh, maybe not here. Um, and that curiosity begins to fade. Ben's nerves start getting the better of him again. Is this... Sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Is the ward on the floor decipherable uh, what language is it in um roll a wisdom just a wisdom check for me okay, starting off strong well relatively strong wisdom check that is a uh, 19 straight wisdom check um it is very familiar. It's in a, uh, a script of... Um, it's, an arca it's an arcane script, very ancient, that you saw many times within the Arcadian Empire. It's known as Aklo. 
Um, are you proficient with that language? Um, no, just ancient Arcadian. You can identify the language, you just can't read it. Okay. I, I am capable of reading it, if necessary. Like, if I'm looking around, I'm, I'm not sure. paying attention to that. So. I'll, I'll say, as I start to move around the space, I'll say, Ben, do you have means to read this ward upon the floor? It is in Aklo, and I cannot read it myself. Uh, yes, uh, I can, yeah. And what does it say, GM? <laughs> um, given the meaning behind the symbol, it's not really magical in nature, but it is a ward of protection. Does it specify against or for what? Does not. But it's supposed to, from the gist of what you're reading, it protects those in the center of it. Wow. Arth will note this and start peeking down these hallways as this, these faint sounds. Uh, we're still hearing moaning, are we not? Distant, yes, but you still hear moaning. And as you peek down this hall, you hear a slight rolling noise. Not again. As you look down this hall, you see a very much smaller version of the Guardian that you just saw. Very small, about the size of a bowling ball. Oh, it's a little baby. And it's rolling down the sides. <clears throat> and as it gets to a point, you can see it in the distance. It, the, the, it's almost made identical, except this one has... Um, the other one was made of like really rich copper and gold. This one's like very bronzish in nature, very simply made. And as it gets to one of the walls, you see it stops... And two of the little cylinders on the side of the ball spring out and extend on little thin arms and turn. And you see these little brush hairs pop out and it starts spinning. And you see it start cleaning the edges of the hallway. It's a fucking Roomba. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> and it. In the middle of all this, the one thing you do know is it's eerily silent as it does this. You didn't notice the sound of it rolling on the floor until you stepped into the hallway. Uh, kind of while they've been having this discussion, uh, Oliver, knowing this is way outside of his area of any sort of knowledge, I. Uh, is literally is taking a more direct route of kind of like what to do and is looking around on the altar for anything that looks like a place to put the heart of the guardian like if there is anything of that nature where it's like fits here like that sort of deal um roll me an investigation check <laughs> okay that's not terrible Let's see. Uh, Oliver on investigation. That's a 15. 15. Um, looking this altar over, it's there's no recesses, there's no holes, there's no, no nothing. It doesn't appear to be anything for you to just go. It's worth checking. Not a bad idea. <laughs> You said there there was a room somewhere? Is there anything in it? Or should we look for another way out? Or There's no way out in that room. I suggest we continue searching through the maze and find Bill, what I wanna... we can. The only thing sorry. that... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask Bill. I want to investigate. I want to see if I can tell where that sound is coming from. What tunnel it is. <laughs> what sound? 
the moaning. It's uh, it's uh, it's around you. It's echoing off the walls. You can't. You can roll a perception with uh, difficulty. Okay. Okay. So the ten. You can't really pinpoint, but you get the feeling that there's more of these strange undead creatures further into the maze. Uh, well, I'm, in, I'm, uh, I'm with Hearth here. I think we just gotta continue exploring. Um, but for the record, those uh, those things, they don't like fire. And then I like load a fire, uh, a fire round into my pistol and cock it. I'm gonna look at Ben and say, the only thing we really found in that other room was instead of robes. Intact? Intact. It's just mm -hmm. gonna turn the head concernedly, but not look in the direction or make eyes contact. But I thought it was nothing, so we had more pressing matters. We just left it be. But it was intact. Mm -hmm. e everything Sorry. else here is deteriorated, or... As I said, we both thought it was just... at other pressing matters, such as... Not ghouly sad. things trying to eat our brain. <laughs> yeah. So, Killian uh, closes his eyes and he stands in the middle of the... Um, in the middle of the chamber and then he spins a bunch of times and puts his arm out and stops and he's pointing towards uh this one here i'm like let's go here <laughs> um, okay <laughs> is as good a lead as we're going to find i think um hearth as this conversation is going on this little ball is kind of rolling closer to you and unless you move it gets to a point where it's within 10 feet of you and the brushes come up on these little spindly arms and kind of recess back into the ball and the ball rolls up and stops and you see another round section of the ball pop up and you see these two little ruby lens like eyes as the almost um, like a Vietnamese farmer's hat on top of it as it sets up and it kind of cocks its I guess head and looks at you up and down and then it goes back into the ball and it rolls past you it's a BB-8 okay, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm letting it pass me as you guys see about the size of a bowling ball this bronze ball just roll past hearth and start rolling around the altar. And once it gets to... You see the remains of one of the mummies that you guys killed? It kind of rolls and bumps into it. It rolls back and you see the same little head pop up. And it looks down and... Shoves its head down and the little brushes come out. And it starts like running around the edge of the body. Interesting. <clears throat> well, it is following its task. I think well, we should tend to ours. Let us be about it. Quietly. Uh, do That's we cool. know what that is? Uh, or do we... I have is, been watching it for some time. Is this altar what we were looking for? Do we keep looking elsewhere? I don't think we really know what we're looking for, but this, the veil is thin between our world and the shadow world. Yeah. And we are looking for a way to close that door. There are several clues here. I think we should do as thorough a search of this place as possible. There is mm -hmm. much to learn, despite our hurry to get out. I'm inclined to agree. Um, 
several of you have a, a boon upon you. Uh, the oh, I'm gonna sneeze. The gift of alacrity is still around, I believe. Yeah. 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 Look at a light. Look at a light. Look at a light. <laughs> uh, several of you have uh, have what I can do to help upon you, but. I don't think I'm going to be much help before you run into another one of those things. I think our resources are running thin. Indeed. Perhaps Indeed. perhaps myself and Oliver will take the lead. I was going to kind of look at both of you and say mm, perhaps stand behind me just in case That seems wise. I, I look at Loris's like thin frame, and then I look at Hearth's like you know more bulky frame <laughs> with his armor, and I'm like, uh, no offense, but he looks a little um, and I like clang clang on his armor hardier. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna say yes, but uh, what happens if something you know damages or you know hurts the clang clang from him tripping on it? I have been traveling with Larissa for some time. I trust her. It is not a matter of trust. It is a matter of being safe as we go. If she is best suited to lead the way, which she has been often, then I will be right behind her. Um, and as... Oliver says that he will materialize his echo as another of his ancestors pops up next to Ben, customarily taking his place in the back. Just pick a direction, then we should keep moving. I agree. Yes. Uh, I think Killian was wanting to go right, which in ways that you don't understand, right is always a good choice. It is at least not wrong. Haha. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay. Did so. I? Who is helming this one hallway of the maze? Who's. Me. Who's leading the way? Okay, give me a perception check, and then is anyone going to aid her? Uh, Oliver yeah. will try and help. Keep an eye out as well as best you can. Okay. So, Oliver, roll me a perception and tell me if you get above a 10. Oh. At a plus 5, barely. That was an 11. Okay. He beat a 10, so Larissa, <laughs> roll your perception check with an advantage. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Ooh. That's a 27. Good one. 27. That's right. 20. That's yeah. a nat 20. Yeah. That's a nat 20. So, um, leading them, which shared party vision should be on. Yeah. You got. You guys can follow behind Larissa. Lead, Larissa, leading you down this hallway safely. You do come to a dead end. I'm basically moving you until you have a cross section. That's fine. Where, where you have to make a decision you see the remnants of another room. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do we want to check this room real quick? Yes. You'll hear from the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to make sure that there's no traps in our way, and I'm going to go into the room. So, roll me a investigation check for. Okay. Come on, D and D bound. Okay, so that's an eighteen. Eighteen. Nice. As you step into this room, you feel pretty confident that there are no traps. As you see a room with three of those very large sealed iron pots that you saw in other rooms. This room reeked of decay and just the old 
age of moist wood. Um, as you... It's different. The rest of the dungeon has been dry and pretty taken care of. As you step in, this the, this room is almost mildewed. And rot has set in to a lot of the wooden aspects of it. As you step on one of the pieces of wood from a broken crate, it almost like a sponge instead of cracking. Um, oh, like off, looks there on their feet. Offset to the northern side of the room are three large iron jugs, similar to the room that you saw um, with the two bodies. And two of the um, purple stone sarcophagus. My, guess... my other... Mother of the group all agreed that the plural for sarcophagus is sarcophagus. Sarcophagus. I thought I thought it was sarcophagi. No, it's, it's definitely right. sarcophagus. No, oh. I'm not very good at it. He's Hong Kong. Hong Kong. I'm, I'm messing with you. Don't even man. believe him. <laughs> don't even <laughs> believe him. I was like, oh God. <laughs> so, as soon as like I step in the room and I feel the squish, I kind of look down at my feet and then pull my shirt sleeve up to my my nose and turn around and say this place it has so horrible and I was like there's there's those pots and I don't know it seems like everything's okay I don't seem like anything's gonna get you if you try to come in here and then I step out and back to the wall so if somebody wants to go through past me they can but i'm uh -huh. not going further in there oliver kind of looks over says, at I, hearth yeah yeah it's like, she says it, as she says it's okay yeah i'd look at you well then <laughs> we open these as well i would be okay. prepared for what is inside of these yeah. we will not know until we look and oliver will step towards one Luke. This is fine. Mm -hmm. Alien's uh, aiming his pistol through the doorway here. <laughs> At hearth. <laughs> yeah. Right. I can do it. Um, I can do it. I'm going to say... I am going to say... Ben. Hmm. Do you recall looking into the sarcophagi outside of the entrance to this maze? Yes. It is a prison... I just want you to be prepared for what we will encounter here. And a, a very gentle, soothing, like tone, kind of shift in the voice. I, I'm not sure why you're also worried about me. Damn it, uh, Trish! Now I'm sitting here and I cannot picture Hearth without picturing Baymax. <laughs> <laughs> I will be fine. I have your back as best I can. Larissa is just going to kind of look at you and like raise a knowing eyebrow and like sh just shake her head at you. And, like look back. <laughs> Who are you shaking your head at? Ben. Like hey, Ben's in a fake until you make it mode. <laughs> yeah, that's like hey, she's kind of like gotta do. like yeah, you know, just kind of judge and be like. Yeah, really, he he really. doesn't look like he believes himself. Yeah, at <laughs> all for sure. That's okay because I look like I don't believe you, so it's just like mm, okay. <laughs> hey, you get your damn hands off her. <laughs> <laughs> no, this uh, is this is completely fine. I'm fine. You're fine. <laughs> We're all fine. Right, then. Since we're yes. all fine it's... with this, then Oliver <laughs> will start pushing the top off of the circle. I'm going to I'm going to aid in this. <laughs> no, no roll needed. With the combination of harsh strength and Oliver's massive strength, um, you push this lid as it grinds off. I need... Um, yep. Oliver... Larissa, Hearth, and Killian to make me a constitution saving throw as you open this sarcophagus, this rancid smell of decay assaults you as it fills this, this is entire room. 
fine, considering, you know, that's my lowest saving throw, but okay. Okay, guys, I rolled a four. So this is where we find out whose character is a sympathetic vomiter. (laughs) (laughs) Those, um, you rolled a four? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I rolled a 15. 15? I'll forget a 21. 21? Earth? I've got a, a 17. Um, and also the ability of having no stomach. So, the funniest part is the person furthest away from the sarcophagus and the one most experienced with tomb delving vomits <laughs> um i'm going to turn around and vomit on Oliver's uh echo here <laughs> <laughs> and Oliver, then, uh, what happens i look I up at him and i'm like phases uh, through it and <laughs> just like no I, notion of anything and I'll turn and look at all of like the real Oliver, and I shrug and be like, "Sorry." And I I watch this happen right in front of me. So, uh, okay. The smell, the source of Oliver and Hart, the source of this smell. There was once a body in here. Um, you see small remnants. Uh, that point that there was someone in here. Uh. A, article of clothing here a bone here but it's literally a red puddle of person soup soil and green is people hey, well that is most foul can you cover that up please I would rather not shut it. Uh, Gideon, and I kind of wave my hand at you like this, and there's some some spittle on your vest that it pressed it just ate so away. Hey. Uh, is there anything you wish to? see in this or do we just want to open the other and I want I think we should open these if it is indeed cutting off the individuals inside from achieving what they can in the beyond the weave and veil planes wherever they are destined do you believe to... their souls would be sane after being in there for so long? I'm going to look in the direction of Ben and say, souls are resilient, Ben, and fulfill their purposes, whatever they may be. And uh, under her breath and say, you were resilient, were you not? Regardless of their current state, none should be prevented from moving on. As Oliver kind of like takes a look back towards his semi-materialized ancestor. They should be free. Then he will move to the other sarcophagus to open it with Hearth as well. As you move to this other sarcophagus, you take notice of the three large iron pots, and they're... Hearth, or Oliver, you would struggle picking these up. Um, As you both notice, you saw one similar to these in the torture, as you lovingly call the torture chamber, with the two emaciated bodies that you found. Um, The difference being... These are still wax sealed around the edges of the lids. Mm. We don't so. know exactly what was in 
the other or what came out of the other is there any writing in them on them does do any of you check I, I would look for yeah. markings of I, any kind I'll, but Oliver is almost certainly not going to be able to read it yeah I'll absolutely look um there are there are no markings but the for such a damp environment in this room um the iron pot is not corroded mm. uh in similar fashion to when uh, he summons his ancestors and rages the that cloudy white crosses Oliver's eyes as he will use his detect magic <clears throat> not magical in nature but it might be for material design they look iron but it might be an alchemical treatment to the iron Hmm. Well, they do not seem to be of the weave, but they are in good sh condition. Do you wish to open these as well? Let us open the sarcophagus first, and then deal with these. I have uh, fear. Very well. That some, something that may have been someone may be inside those. <clears throat> so, as you both move the lid, you notice, different from the other one, this one takes a little bit of heft. This one was sealed. The other one apparently was not. This one had a some type of chemical seal to it because as you as you push, almost a shell towards where the edges of the stone meets kind of cracks and breaks and gives way as this hop slides off. Um, the smell of decay, a drier decay, hits you, but not as bad as the what the horror show that you discovered in the previous sarcophagus. Um, Inside, <clears throat> similar to what you saw, chained to the bottom of this sarcophagus is an armored individual. The body is long dead, uh, emaciated, mummified. Um, the armor of the individual hearth you recognize as a magi. Um, the hawk-like helmet, uh, very similar to the guards that accompanied you to the island long ago um, lay as he is bound to the bottom of this sarcophagus. Um, the armor, still pristine and nice, surprisingly giving the age, and beside him, at the bottom of the sarcophagus, lies a very familiar spear that the Magi carried. Yeah. I'm gonna grab that spear. <laughs> not not like just jacking it out of the tomb but uh <laughs> very I'm careful like I'm jacking I'm, it out of the tomb well no I just mean I, I'm going to place a hand on the helmet and say under my breath may you be at peace and take up the spear So uh, I, worth worth noting, the detect magic would still be running for Oliver here for a little bit. So does anything start glowing as we open this thing up? The armor and the spear. Well, it would seem that these, however, are magical. Yes. What kind of armor, uh, Bill, functionally, do you think this would be that um, I would be able to recognize? Chainmail. Okay. It's it's um you'll find it um it's it's the common armor that was worn by the guards of the Arcadian Empire. It's it was magically treated 
and created, much like several of the things in the Arcadian Empire. Um, it's exact properties, you're not exactly sure. But this is just given your common knowledge and your dealings with the Magi. I'm going to work to free um, as much as I... It might not be that hard. I might be able to literally uh, slip whatever remains out of the shackles at the bottom of the tomb. I'm assuming it's the shackles, the iron shackles that we had noticed before. Yep, exact same make. I'm going to try and ease the limbs out of the shackles. It's... Um... As emaciated as the body is, it's very, very brittle. It's going to be hard to do without snapping. I doubt that. I doubt that we're going to, I'm going to be able to move them at all <laughs> without something snapping, so yeah. I'm going to just do that. So. I'm basically saying, if yeah. Hearth is not going to concern himself with that, um, you are able to free the armor right. and retrieve the spear. Um, you I'm, have... trying to free the, I'm trying to free the body and the, like the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, what I can, obviously, there will be some you... uh, non, non, non-romantic uh, snapping off and body parts falling, but you, you, I'm going to do my best to take care, as much care as I can with these remains. Those of you outside of the room, you hear what sounds like the snapping, snapping of kindling getting ready to build a fire as Hearth reaches into the sarcophagus and starts removing the remains. Uh, as the body gets lifted, and I'm kind of like looking around the corner to see what it is. Um, while I may not have had as much, nearly as much interaction with them as Hearth would, just given my station and his, is that? It is. You're just gonna hear. Why were the peacekeepers entombed? They were deemed enemies of the people who converted this place. Enemies of the Tanweer. It would yeah. seem all the more reason <clears throat> that we do our best to lay them to rest then, yes? Earth nods and says... Ben, you kind of hear the voice directed at you. They were peacekeepers of Arcadia, but many people have their own interpretations of peace. And it's going to move these bring the remains out look again at the puddle inside the other one ask everyone to stand back and I am going to yeah I'm going to set the body down and I'm going to say to everyone in the group any of you that would like to join me in a prayer? Your hearts and minds would be appreciated. And I am going to begin a prayer. <sighs> Darkness and the void will swallow all, but for the light that shows their shadow. From stars in the night to torches in the tomb, the everlight shines throughout the cosmos. May all spirits of light, shadow, and the void be free from this prison to fulfill their purposes beyond. 
and I am going to sacred flame the inside of the one that has the puddle. Okay. Um, this roil- roiling smell of just boiling bile um, emanates from this sarcophagus as it burns away. Walk over to the mummy or the mummified one that are pulled out. Just kind of run my hand from head down to chest, uh, not actually touching, but for the briefest of moments, you see as Ben kind of thematically rolls back time just for the faintest of seconds. Uh, and then it's gone. You see almost like a, a scanner running down a creature in, in a sci-fi setting. Uh, you see the hawk helm and masked face like uh, draped in blue cloth and you know, the tabard restored and all of that. And just as my hand moves, the image is there for like a millisecond behind my hand. Be at peace. Have the peace that you gave me. And Hearth will be ready to move along, um, possibly carrying this body with us as we go. Indeed. Will you want to check these oh, that's containers? Right. That's right, yes. As Oliver says that, yes, that was part of the purpose. Right then, and he will go to uh, the largest of them and pull off the wax seal. Yeah, before, as that is happening, as you're walking up to them, I'm going to say, call out uh, Killian, Larissa, if you could be here too. Support us in what may emerge here. Ben, as well. I'm going to still stand close to the door like I was, but at the wall. So I can see what's inside, but not. So, uh, Oliver, as you go to open the lids to these heavy iron, uh, iron containers, um, you pick the first one, and the edge of it is encrusted with like this wax, a mixture of wax and resin seal. You're able to crack it open um, with a simple hit of your hand or something harder like the pommel for your sword. Chipping it away, the top slides up. The top is incredibly heavy. I mean, not too heavy for you, but the hearth of it is pretty good. Um, Sliding it away, you see about Three inches down from the lid, the stillness, and you don't know what this black liquid is until the smell hits you of this sickening, deliciously sweet smell. Same we all. It smells like the others. But it is definitely still in here, whatever it is. Put the lid back on. Do we know what this is? No. (laughs) But I'm not inclined to leave it open. It is some means. Whatever it is, it is present in the bodies of the creatures we have slain. Um, roll me an invest. Uh, you're holding, uh, withholding this corpse. Uh, roll me an investigation check, Hearth. Yep, it's about what I expected from that one. Um,. Yeah, that's a six. Yeah. You don't notice anything. I, um... 
I'm going to say my best guess is that it is part of the embalming process. Um, do we wish to just leave them then? Does anyone have anything I'm looking around for? I'm looking around for a length of wood or something, uh, something that might be able to get down into the pot. Um, given the wet nature of this room in the mildewed, mildewed wood, most of the wood that you go to pick up feels more sponges and kind of pulls apart and fibers in your hand. Okay. Uh, Oliver removes one of the javelins from his back and hands it to oh. Hearth. Beautiful. Um, I would just use this one, but uh, it means a little too much to me right now. <laughs> um, yeah, Hearth is going... I'm going to put the javelin in and sort of swirl. The, uh, I'm, I'm only checking to see if there is something inside a side oh, of black liquid. Um, feeling the javelin. The javelin doesn't scrape against anything other than the sides of the pot. Um, during the pot, you, the smell does start to permeate more into the room and hearth um hearth oliver killian and larissa give me a uh wisdom saving throw just as a clarification um i remember this being vaguely one that like you wanted to eat it i yeah. do not eat is this I going know. to affect me in this? I just wanted to check. Yeah. I'm happy to make it. I just wanted to. It's not an eating. It's more of a you want to consume it. I see. This is going to go great, y'all. I rolled a 14. It's a wisdom save? Oh, oh yeah. no. Oliver's All All is going to eat it. Rolled an 8. Oh, uh, y'all are going to um, eat it. No. Larissa, I... <laughs> you find yourself unconsciously walking towards the um, pot. You you crave whatever it is that's inside this pot. Oliver, before um, Hearth, give me a dexterity save. Because before you know it, Hearth has grabbed a handful Oliver. I mean, sorry, Oliver has grabbed a handful and is almost to his mouth with it. Can I, like can I have a reaction? Could, could I, well, hold on, hold on. Could I possibly <laughs> have advantage because my wisdom save is a uh, no. 25. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, ben, do you have light of sight on Hearth? Or Oliver? <laughs> uh, so while the token is there, I did specify that I was watching what was happening. Okay. Um, uh, your reaction, you're going to try to make him re-roll? Yeah. Uh, do, do you have to know the um, not know the outcome before you do that? Is it, is it like Lucky? No, no. Just uh, You can let me roll my deck save. You can make this I'm decision gonna... after you see whether the roll succeeds or fails. Okay. Yeah, but I can literally only do it twice, so I've already done it once. I still so, have my deck saved, so... Um, because uh, we were so far into the flavor, what I'll do is I'll <laughs> oh, let Oliver's you... Oliver's real close to the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm going it. to let you roll on his deck save if he fails. To stop him. How about that? I follow. Yeah, so okay. roll your deck save... For me, hearth, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That is a. Let's see. That is a nine, but I am going to succeed on it with my ring of evasion. <laughs> <laughs> so you can. Um... With a ring of evasion, just a simple save to see if you grab his hand. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can. Yeah. Uh, I mean, any deck saving throw. Okay. Any deck. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll I'll go with it. Um, Oliver, before you have this handful of black liquid into your mouth, 
Hearth reaches out and grabs your hand. Um, since you rolled a one, it's going to be a contested strength. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only I doing to... this because you rolled a one. No, I, I, to... I'm here for it. I, I hey. lean into the failure. I'm, I'm all for it. May need your help on this. One, <laughs> well, the, the thing is, I see you reaching for it, and so I relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing this because one, I know how all, strong Oliver is, and two, you roll a one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So and, your, and also he really wants you to eat it. <laughs> your hand hits Oliver's arm and I can almost guarantee you it just doesn't even stop moving. <laughs> it's a total of a twenty five. Oh shit. <laughs> There's no way. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen plus eight. Give it to a heart, he'll eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Oliver. I the moment the moment that you described this stuff, I was like, uh, Oliver is gonna wind up eating this shit at some point while we're in here. It's gonna happen. I was like, maybe the gods will shine and Bill will be merciful if I get a nat twenty. Well, I got a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. like I've, just I've... doesn't even slow the motion giving you all the chances in the world um only if you didn't roll that one i i'm here for it lay it on me you try to stop and as you shove this black sweet tasting liquid into your mouth you die rolling a character give me a dc charisma saving throw (laughs) ah charisma saving throw yeah so this is gonna be a flat roll 14 could have been worse i don't like that face <laughs> do you have inspiration i don't <laughs> that's really not a bad roll it's literally like whatever's on the die i mean i rolled a 14 mm-hmm. my chances of doing better are not significantly high on a re-roll mm-hmm. so the dc is 14 <laughs> nothing happens how's it taste though yeah how's it how's it taste though Mm. without if you didn't look at the consistency it's the best honey you've ever tasted in your entire life ben is looking at horror yeah like all three of us i I feel like me larissa and ben are all just like nope i'm like unconsciously walking towards this thing yeah larissa's still walking towards Uh, it i'm i'm fairly certain standing behind you despite like the lack of reaction to anything from the barfing that happened through it oliver's ancestor is looking on in horror (laughs) (laughs) as this is going on um roll me a perception check ben because you're the one closest to her Emotionally. There's a part of me that wanted that to fail just to know what happened. 19. 19. You see as Larissa is sticking, is going to stick her hand into the pot. Um, I'm, I'm standing there too. I need a, Oh, you're struggling with Oliver. (laughs) I need a strength saving throw from Larissa, please. Oh, that's not. (laughs) Okay. Fourteen. Okay, as you reach your hand in there, you are lifted off the ground and tossed ten feet. Oh! Don't got yeeted! (laughs) (laughs) Ben Ben goes, no! (laughs) And you, like, he panics for a moment, and you, with the force of his will, you are just launched ten feet. I I think that's the first time Oliver wasn't the one to do the yeeting. No, excuse me. Five feet. You were launched, launched five feet. I was like, what do I hit? The wall. I just threw you into the wall. You don't take you any are, damage you other are, than your pride. You are now covered in the foul-smelling mildew, but you are fine. Like, uh, don't. No. I was like, what? What, what are you all the, doing? Like, Let's what, get, what happened? Out of the, get out of the room. <laughs> Now. 
Oliver, like, Oliver, you see Oliver's he's like, got, like licking his hand, yeah. like just licking it clean. <laughs> Did you eat Oliver, that? What what possessed you to put that into your he's mouth? Not even responding, just continuing. Like uh, Oliver, Oliver, come here. There's more out here. I I I think with like the nature of it, like he does. There's no recollection to what anybody is trying to tell him right now. Like he's consumed by what is happening in his hand. Like y'all will have to drag his ass away. I guess it's gonna be fun. Mm. Okay. Uh, so with his measly minus one to strength, Ben is gonna like come come on the big guy. <laughs> oh, I'm come I'm on. going to throw every bit of strength I have into trying to get Oliver, him. do you I, resist? I, I don't think he resists being moved at this point, but like the contesting of that going to his mouth was absolutely resisted. But I think at this point, like once he'll, once he'll he... walk wherever he's moved, but like he is still just every inch and bit that is in his hand. He will continue to remove Okay. Um, Gabriel's disgusted. <laughs> you are able to successfully move Oliver out of the room. And Larissa? Question? And Larissa. Uh, After the initial shock of be of being drawn to eat this chemical, or this whatever this is, um, Larissa being slammed into the wall, you're able to break it. Um, Oliver, after consuming everything that's on your hand, you feel satisfied in what you did, but you honestly don't understand why you did it. <clears throat> I, yeah. I, so, I don't have an answer for why so, I just did that. Maybe we shouldn't open eat those. random things in the in the temple. <laughs> maybe. Kill, kill you, maybe you you lead the way from now on. I'm fine. I just, I just. Uh, why do? It's it, weird. It was, I'm I'm sorry if you're hurt. It it was. <laughs> I just lashed out. It was my. Mm. I don't remember very much. Well, that headache you have is probably my fault. I'm just gonna kind of look at you. I'm just like. And this, and he'll kind of like wave his hand, and the, all the like mold and whatnot on your sleeve just dissipates. I'm just like gonna touch, some... gonna touch my hat, and make like make like I'm not really using it, but I'll look at it, and make sure like I'm not messed up, put it back on my head. <laughs> it's still there. Fine. Are we done here? Let's go. I hope so. We are done. There appears to be another. Trail down this way. How about we check this one? Yes. All right, All right. Bill. I'm gonna look down. Okay. See if I can oh. see any traps or anything. Anything waiting yeah. for us? Give me as uh, you guys are heading this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me a perception check like last time, and if anyone's going to help her. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to help. Okay. Then you know the deal. You roll your perception. You get above a ten. Let her know. Roll a five. Okay, you roll straight roll. Okay. He's not really helping. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nineteen. I'm still like, I'm, I'm still like, why, why would you put that in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, it actually was quite. No, sweet. no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that to yourself, Oliver. <laughs> So yeah. is lead, lead. So is lead. It's sweet. <laughs> Moving Don't down here, you have a left or right. Which way do you go? Let's just continue Maybe right. Like... I have a bad feeling about right, but okay. All right, coming around this corner, you find another room. And before we investigate that room, I did get a request in our Discord chat for a really quick bio break. So, ooh, ooh. 
Uh, do we want this to be like our official break? Or are we just making a real fast one? If yeah, let's go ahead and go to break. Yeah, okay. we'll just go ahead and we'll just take an early break. All right. Well, in that case, since we are taking our break, I will be starting a raffle in chat for our giveaway, and we will announce the winner afterward. You should be able to type exclamation point raffle in just a moment here. Let me get it started. Do, 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 do. Uh, there you go. So, uh, anybody in chat, you can type exclamation point raffle to enter to win a free custom mini from Eldritch Foundry. Uh, you do have to be a follower in order to be selected as a winner. So if you haven't followed us, give us a follow, or even if you enter the raffle, it won't pick you. So Woo-hoo. give us a follow and we will be back from break in just a few minutes. All right, let's see what we can get Oliver to eat again when we come back. <laughs> oh my God. Eat the wand.
Okay, and we're back. All right. So, um, give a, a last like five seconds here for anybody else that wants to jump in the raffle. You got like five, four, three. All right, raffle is closed, and the winner is in fact Int Mastermind. So. Yay! Uh, Congrats. And Mastermind, uh, I will ping you in a DM here. All I will need is an email address from you, and I will be able to send you the token for the new mini. Awesome. And we won't spam you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we actually send you a can of spam. So, oh, yeah, thanks for joining us here today, and I will ping you here in just a little bit. So, going back into the game, as we last left off, Larissa leading this small expedition <laughs> from one room to another, it seems, you see before you another ruined and wrecked room. Before you, 
not as mildewy as the room before, but this one going into it, it's dust covered and broken except for a clean trail leading from the hall here into the corner. Okay, I'm going to check and make sure the path is okay. Okay. Stepping into this room, mm -hmm. you find that it's a wreck of just broken boxes, uh, shelving. It's very dry in this room compared to the room just above. Mm -hmm. um, there is a clean pass. The, the, the dirt, dirt has been removed up until this corner. And in this corner, you find a pile of different metallic parts. You see um, small metallic arms, brushes, limbs, parts of like shells that are round and just piled in together on, in this corner. Can I tell what it's from? Um, seeing the creature earlier, or the creation earlier, it seems to be the remains of several hundred of little cleaning iron, uh, round robots or constructs, as you saw before. Like they cleaned this path and then got stuck? No. Freaking Wally. As in, this is where they've been shoved. I'm going to look who, to whoever's the closest behind me and say, um, there's a huge section here to the wall that's clean. There's no dust on the floor. There's some of those parts for those r robot things, but I don't think they did this. Like, they look like they've been just placed back here. Perhaps the Guardian has a difficult time distinguishing friend from foe. Uh, above here, you do see the remnants of a broken shelf. Um, the books and the materials have kind of collapsed in on itself. And I go investigate the shelf and see if I find anything. Okay. Give me an investigation check. What is everybody else doing? You know, nosy. Exactly. I think I'm going to go in and examine the uh, automaton ports. Um, looking at the remains of these small constructs, um, they show various wear and tear and different um, forms of deterioration. Um, they look to be as as incomplete as they were as if they shut down and were pushed here piled in this corner it seems that even these magical creations have a lifespan And then I'll move on to kind of search around the rest of the room. Okay. What was your investigation check, Larissa? 18. 18. Um, digging through, a lot of the these papers are old enough to where when you pick them up, they start to crumble. Um, the books themselves are not magical in nature. Uh, no spell books or anything. Uh, due to the dry nature of the area, they just kind of crumble away at your at your you're fiddling with. Um, digging through the pile of parchment, you do eventually come across a glass vial with a corked stopper. Inside is a black liquid, and it looks almost like you're staring into a galaxy with starlight as it sparkles. I'm going to turn around and just kind of, like, hold it up to the light towards the door. Mm -hmm. It's a jet black mass within the bottle 
as it's just pin pricks of little sparkling light. Think something gonna. Can I make an arcana check to see if I know what that is? Sure. I'm gonna to turn to Hearth and say, uh, "Hearth, do you have you seen something like this before?" I got a twenty-seven. Probably oh snap! An arcane, probably an arcane potion. Um, looking at it. With a 27. Through the arcane, nothing is spiking your mind. However, you've seen something similar to this. Very large. And a pull of it. That attacked you guys. At the beginning Ooh. of this dungeon. Uh, Larissa, you see like a look of concern cross Killian's face. And I put my hands out like... Uh, hey, um, maybe be careful with that. That looks like the same thing that we fought when we walked in here. Very carefully, kind of, like, looking at it and going, what should we do with it? I'm not going to eat well, that. <laughs> Damn it, I was going to say, <laughs> well, we're not going to eat it. <laughs> looking pointedly at Oliver. <laughs> Maybe we just leave it for now. I'm gonna look kind of concerned back at the floor and... And Ben and then everybody else and just... I, I could be wrong, but... I don't know. I just... Hang on to it if you feel it's safer, but... The longer we linger here, the more dangerous it becomes. I'm gonna make moves to go out if it seems like we've searched. I'm gonna the um. Bookshelf. <clears throat> I'm gonna wrap it. I'm just gonna spend a couple minutes wrapping it very carefully and putting it into the bag of holding. Okay, um, on D&D Beyond, add Formless Spawn Residue. It should be in the um, items. Okay. Gross. Gross. Okay, so um, I'm going to, I guess we keep moving forward. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Sure. Uh, you didn't like right last time, so let's go left. Mm. All right. So, who is helming this adventure? Me, probably. All right. Although everybody's like... That's fine. Go ahead. Uh, and I will help. Uh, trying to mentally kind of map this place. I'm going to kind of use candles to make marks. <laughs> yeah. Um, On the floor. Just to streak some wax here and there. What? As I was looking at the, the thing moving around, I'm going to try and put them in places that it didn't seem to be brushing. You put it up high enough. Uh, what kind of roll did you want? Perception. Perception. Uh, dirty 20. Alright, so roll your perception with advantage to see if you spot any traps. Mm, well, good, because I'm probably going to need that. <laughs> okay, it's an 11. That's the highest. Wow. <laughs> that was me last game, dude. I get it. So, left yeah. or right? Um, We've been going right, so I guess go right. Okay. So as you go down further into the maze, you come to a dead end. Nothing I'm at left. Help. I'm at left. 
Is there anything down here at all? Like, can I see if I can see a secret door or roll for it? What do you want? Investigation or perception? Do what? Investigation or perception? Investigation. Why couldn't you be the last roll? Twenty-two. Oh, there you go. Twenty-two. As you are peering around this sandstone dead end, you are looking, and you do notice that under one of the bricks, it's been very well made. Incredibly well made. Um, however, underneath one of the bricks, you do notice that there's an area where your finger sticks in about up to the first knuckle, and you fill a latch, and you push, and you hear a click, and the wall shifts, and you hear a grinding noise as it starts to grind in, and you... Do you pull your finger out? <laughs> no. You find a door. Nice. Interesting. Well done. Check it for traps real quick before I touch it. Okay, roll for it. That one's better. That's a 17. Okay. Um, stepping into the small tunnel, roughly carved, not as nice as the sandstone-like maze, mm -hmm. you come to another door. And this one's simple. Opening it, the shelf moves away and you are in the torture chamber that you were in before. Neat! Okay. Loris is all excited, but Killian's like, damn it, we're moving in circles. Mm. <laughs> well, at least we know there's a shortcut to get out. <clears throat> this is where we found the robe, right? Let's say this is a far cry from in out. Fact, in fact, they are still lying there. The, yes. The Body. So, um, very similar to what you saw before, uh, there is an empty iron jug in this corner. Um, mm -hmm. Dust covered a uh, book and tome that once you touched, the dust kind of faded away as if the um, book had aged enough to where it became dust itself. Uh, in this corner is another Magi but not entombed, left here to rot, chained to the walls in a simple form of a shirt, similar to the one that Hearth is still carrying. In this corner is a emaciated body of a mage in this purplish lavender robe. Gonna, what, would have, huh. what would have been really messed up is we walk back in here and the bodies are gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna uh, look at Ben and say... This is where the robe was. And point oh. to the corner. They've come full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, um, well, there was a direction we didn't take back there. I said we double back. Yep. Uh, and I'm like, hang, hang on just a moment. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm just going to step in and take a quick scan of the robe. Uh, see if it looks worth snagging for later. Mm hmm. I worth snagging for later. Uh, does it appear to be pristine? Other than dust covered and dirt covered, the material hasn't deteriorated. Curiosity is getting the better of me. Uh, save it for later, I guess. You. Uh, and we're seeing you, I'm probably seeing him look at it like, maybe Hearth could help? With what? If you want it. And Ben, like, reaches down and grabs the rope and pulls it away and the body crumbles. It takes a little bit. It's like trying to pull it off a stick figure, but yeah. eventually you do pull it off and it, com it comes away from the body. Well, not the body anymore. It, uh, the mummy, pretty much. It's mummified. Yeah. 
kind of kind of look at Hearth. And looks like he's trying to be brave. Yeah, I kind of look at Hearth for a reaction, and then just go back to where I found the trap door in the crossroad. Hearth is going to set this body that I'm carrying down, and. Uh, Just say to anyone that's nearby, probably best to tend to these at a later time. Mm. Now we know where they are. So, Perhaps set that down. We'll Go. leave your friend here as well. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set them down. And. Are you setting them down with the armor? I'm going to take, as gently as possible, take the armor. Okay. And I'm definitely taking the javelin. And it, do I sense, do I sense, I don't know if I'd be able to, do I sense any ability to attune to this spear or this javelin? You would not know it would have to get identified. Okay. Can... I am going to say to Ben, at your earliest leisure, could you tell me what this does? The properties of it. I have seen it function before, but I would like to know how to use it. Certainly. Uh, but let's uh, follow Killian, I think, had an idea of doubling back. Let's see if we can find a way through... Uh, I'm not sure how many hours have passed, but we've been down here a long time. Uh, yeah, almost four weeks. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna follow the path I know is not trapped, and take me back to the crossroads where I made the wrong turn to hit the dead end. Okay. How long is the javelin? Mm, javelin length, as three, Bill doesn't know. Three-ish <laughs> feet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, reach into my dimensional carry-on and pull out a replica of my chest, summon the chest back. Robe, armor, javelin. Close it. Dismiss it. Um, Remember, if you do not write it down... It is written down. It it does not exist. (laughs) Uh, Just so we don't have to worry about carrying it currently. All right. Did we talk about the storage room because you had all those documents and everything? Your chest. Uh, all of that's out. gone. Okay. Uh, we've we've purged it once before, but I am keeping track of what's in there. Okay. So there were two forks. I can go left here and go back to the one up there, or we can go straight here and right. Uh, let's take the path we know back to the middle and try a different way out. Okay. So we're going to go straight here, make sure that this is okay, and then here. So you're going right? I thought we were going this way and then right. Are we going here? Are are you going the way that I'm moving your token? Yes. Okay. Fine. I'm just trying to keep this moving. So eventually you do come back. I'm just going to move the whole party there back to the center of the maze. Okay, so we went right last time and came all the way back. Should we go straight? This was the route we took. No, uh, the right to the right is the route we took. This is where we took. This is where this I'm asking right. if we want to go. I, I think just in the realm of I mean, as long as space functions relatively normally here, uh, that will all take us back to the same areas. Let's yeah. try, try one of these. Okay, so... So I, I look at both paths and I look to the right and I say, well, if that goes where it should, that, that probably brings us back to the entrance. So let's follow this path here. Okay. All right. I'm going to go head down All right, this so path. You guys know what I want. 
Alright. <laughs> Who's helping her? Oliver will give it a roll. Uh, it's a nat 20 on the Yay. assistant, so total of 25. Alright, I'll do the truffle shuffle. <clears throat> the truffle shuffle. Uh, what is with the truffle? Okay, that's a 13. Okay, Man. so moving forward to about right here, you have two paths, left and right. Continues. Oh. Right. All right has been working for us so far. If we okay. keep going that way, we will eventually hit them all. Yes? Okay, so. All right, so we're going right. I think the goal here is to explore this entire thing. We want to get out of here, right? Right. Tell me when I need to roll again, Bill. So, you come to another choice. Hey. Let's keep going, though. Yeah. Alright. Oliver is going to take a moment to look around the corner here. The other direction, since we had just talked about continuing right. <laughs> yeah. It does continue this way, but whichever I'm fine way with you prefer. I'm fine with continuing right. It's up to the whole party. What do we want to do? If our goal is to get out, there was the entrance. I mean, the goal is to figure out what we can or can't even do in this place. So, I mean, I don't even know that we know what we're looking for. I mean, we know <laughs> the way out. The way out is backwards. Back we're through doors go, we're that to, closed yeah, on us that we can't. We're trying to go forward. Get yeah. back through again. Yeah. So, because so, you're, lead, you're Larissa's leading, so you, you yeah, wherever. Okay, I'm going this way. Okay. Roll me a perception check, Larissa. Just one. Okay. okay. I no longer has that urchin ability. Ten. <laughs> Ten. God. Uh, you see this path as being clear. Okay. And coming around this corner, as you reach here, you come face to face with a mummy reaching out for you. Step back. Can I blast it? Well, right now, we will be going into initiative. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's roll for initiative. And, oh, we haven't gotten to use the really nice initiative tracker now that you guys can watch. Yeah, pretty excited. That we yeah, actually, me too. And don't forget your gift of alacrity, folks. Mm -hmm. D8 on those initiatives for whoever had it. So, I call your name, just tell me what you get really quick, Oliver. Uh, <laughs> I, let's see, nat 20 plus f 7, so 27. Okay, uh, Ben, That's did so you bad. just roll yours in Astral? I did. I was just waiting for you to bring the tracker up. And you got a 29? Yes, I did. Yeah, I got it I got it up. Okay, uh, Hearth. 11. 11. Hearth, Larissa, and Oliver have Gift of Alacrity. Larissa. Yeah. Uh, with the Gift of Al Alacrity, it's 19. 19. All right. Killian. 18. All right, so... All right, so this is what you see at the top of this uh, first round. Uh, coming around this corner, Larissa is met face to face with this skeletal hand reaching from the darkness to grab her. I, I can't see it. Mm -mm. Um, do, 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 do. Ben will hold an action to use his cantrip against any threats he sees but he doesn't really know that anything is happening at this point and that is my turn okay uh is there space for me to kind of shove my way up here or no uh yes you'll be able to shove past your friends all right uh in that case i will head up that direction um, echo moving up here and take a couple swings 
Um, do I have to be raging to use reckless attack? I don't, do I? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I will make two reckless attacks on this thing. Wow! I, for two threes on the die, so that's cool. fun. Um, let's see, so that's a total of 11, I'm assuming does not hit. Barely hits. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, Alright, so that is 7 plus 5 for 12, because I don't get my rage damage right now, and then the second attack will definitely hit if the 11 hits, so... Second attack is 11 more, so a total of 23 points of damage. <laughs> okay, so you just wail into this undead. <clears throat> its body starting to ooze and seep that black liquid that you've come so familiar with. Uh, and I haven't used it yet, uh, so I will uh, end with a bonus action uh, to second wind as one of my ancestors briefly appears. And uh, does a ritualistic kind of spell there. And that will end my turn. I'll mark the healing accordingly. Okay. So I'm going to use my summer's dance on it. That's a 21. Hey, you are definitely able to hit it. Okay. I'm not a fan of this battle music. Ah. No. Not feeling it. That's okay. So that's a uh, 10 for the summer's dance, and then I can't, I never can remember. Since he's like. I'm, is he threaten focused? Oh. I'm threatening it. Since I'm yeah. next to it, you would have your sneak attack. Okay, so. Do, 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 do. Lots of stuff. So in total, it's 27 points of damage. Nice. <clears throat> okay. That's the end of my turn. End your turn. Killian, you're up, buddy. All right. Uh, can I see it when I step back into this corner here? Yes, definitely. You do All see. Right. Uh, and Oliver doing battle with this um, very familiar kill, uh, mummy that you've come across in this tomb. Its rags are still the resin hardened against its emaciated and decrepit body as every wound seems to seep that thickening sweet black liquid. Delicious. I'm going to burn it. Firebolt. Yeah. It's an 18. You do hit. Okay damage nice okay that's 16 so doubled is what is uh 32 as this skeleton just erupts into flames noise told you they don't like fire it just as quickly as it started combat is over as the stillness of the maze comes quiet again and in the distance you can hear more of these creatures with the low shake my head and be like I'm sorry I'll try to focus more it's um, okay I just feel like we're turning in a circle again Well, let's at least go down to the end of this path, and if we look like we're turning in a circle, we can go back up. We don't have to keep going too far. Certainly. Uh, mm -hmm. So, go for it. Just frustrated and trapped is all. So, continuing further past the body of that mummy, continuing the path down, you come to this section. You see another choice in the area to make. You see several different passageways. This one, given Larissa's line of sight, you see a door. You barely see the outline of a door over here. It is, so. it, it is one of those 
um, you can see it's the graying wood that's almost been turned to stone. How far do you think that is from me? The door? Mm-hmm. 22 feet. I was just measuring it, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look back really quick, and I'm going to say, I'm going to do something. Um, just to see in the door. Um, not necessarily going to... Um, I mean, you can follow me if you want, but I'm just going to poof over to the door to see if I can see what's in it, if it's a dead end. Sure. So I'm going to misty step to the door. <laughs> okay. So you poof here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check and see if there's any traps in the door. The door is open. Okay, I'm going to slightly push it over and see if I can see inside. As you look inside, you see a room of corroded and rusted cells open. Barred cells with what appears to be pieces of remains throughout this celled room. That thickening sweet, uh, sweet smell is present in here, but not as strong as you see another one of those iron pots in this corner with the lid laying beside it. Around the floor, you see something that you haven't seen before. Hate in this black liquid. You see these bronze and tin funnels. Found the embalming room. Yeah. Gross. I'm gonna gonna kind of turn back and say uh, uh, these are cells I don't know I, I think I'm just gonna check real quick I don't I don't know if anybody wants to follow but I don't know if we should linger in here too long I'm just gonna make a quick investigation through the room See if I can oh. see anything of notice, or if I see a lever that might be another door. Give me an investigation check. That's an 18. Um, a, given the age of this room, um, a lot of the cells are just covered in debris. The... One cell does contain a intact withered skeleton. The person was bound naked um, through a length of chain. It lays in a fetal position in the middle of the cell. On your investigation check, you do notice that around its mouth is very similar to the funnel. It has the black liquid that is hardened and caked around its mouth. Gross. Oh, quite touch it and be like, I'm sorry this was done to you. Kind of like remembering what she saw the church do and heard of the church do. It's like, and kind of gets up and kind of goes to walk away again and to see anything else in here. Say something, I couldn't hear you, sorry. No. Okay. I'm going to go back, and I'm assuming Hearth is sitting here, and I'm going to say, um, there's another body down there. It looks like they, uh, they took the funnel and poured whatever that stuff is into it. I, I'm not going to linger here very long. I would imagine that the effect took place while they were still alive. Yes. And I'm going to go get the body. Okay. Easy enough. <laughs> Similar to before. Um, the cage doors does open. Um... 
there's no mechanical locking mechanism. Um, it seems to be that it might have been magical in nature, or a simple magical lock, uh, that long since dissipated. As the metal door just opens with a creak of... Um, you're able to pick the body up and remove the chains, similar to the fashion that you've done before. Um, as described to Larissa, the this person's mouth and chest, what remains of it, is caked in the black liquid. A hardened form of the black liquid. Yep. I'm going to carry the body back with me. Then uh, Hearth <clears throat> leaves this room carrying another emaciated, mummified figure. At this point, Ben is kind of back to his nervous pacing. Um, you know, the spirit of bravery, you know, the adrenaline of combat, or the things are, are passing fairly quickly for him. The anxiety is setting back in. So. I... Okay, we found another one. Uh... Uh... Right. Shall we continue, then? Yes. Do we continue in this direction, or...? Uh, Oliver at least comes down here, and... It would seem there is another split. I'll do... We continue right here, as well? If it doesn't look like it's... I'm gonna peer, like, around the corner, like, as much as I can to see if it looks like it's gonna dead end. Which corner? Like, I'm right here. Okay, peering down this corner, you do see what appears to be a dead end in here. Let's just turn back then. Remember, the last dead end was a door, though. But yeah. it's up to you. Worth checking. It's not far there if you want to check it. Why not? Famous last words. Yeah, right. Okay, I mean, we're so looking gonna... for things. I, I, this is this is what we're doing. Like we're trying to figure out where to yeah. go. So yeah. Yep, so I'm going to go down here just to make sure that there's not a hidden door, and I'm going to check for traps on the way. Alright, give me a um, perception check. That's an 11. Oh my Dear god. Lord. It seems... I'm going to start using dice. Yeah, <laughs> please start using different dice. <laughs> it has been sub 5 almost every freaking roll for you today. Mm. I know because it's plus seven. Do you I, know how hard I'm, a, I'm aware. Like I, I've, <laughs> I've noticed. So, so, you come to this door, mm. or you come to this wall, very similar to the one you saw before. Okay. Can I find another lever or another like? Roll me an investigation check. Okay. I just dropped my dice. Oh, I think. All right. Sorry, crit roll dice. I'm not going to use you this time. Uh, that one's better. Um, that's a 15. 15. Okay, so searching this wall, you do find a lever. Reaching in and while filling around, you find the same gap. Very similar. In, um, sorry, I'm having a little bit of an issue here. Mm -hmm. Do apologize. Do apologize. So, um, reaching in, you do f take your fingers and you stick them up underneath. It goes to the knuckle again and you find a switch very happy you flip 
that switch and you hear the same similar gunk and grinding noise as a set of spinning blades comes out from the wall. Ooh. Well. Yep. Yep. Okay. Can you dodge it? Or try to dodge it? Or... If not, give you me did. A, give me a dexterity save. <laughs> say, I'm, roll, roll a new character. <laughs> I was like, I'm a roguish. That should work. Uh, roguish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roguish. That should work. So that's an 18. Nice. 18. Yeah. So, as these blades come out, you very quickly are able to dodge them. You, I believe you have evasion. You're going to take half damage, but I think you can just ignore it. I'm okay. pretty sure. Yeah, yes. for a dexterity she, saving throw. Yeah, yeah. I can just ignore it if I, if I save. Yeah. All right. So, you will take... You better hope... Well, she made the save, right? Oh, yeah, I made the save. It should just be So she done. just doesn't take anything. Nothing. Yeah, I just okay. don't. You would have taken 25 points of damage. <laughs> well, yay, you broke. Okay. So, so Larissa <laughs> jumps back. <laughs> and I'm just going to get my, like, look at myself and say, get, get yourself together. Get yourself together. And I'm going to, like, push open the door. So, I was just about to ask, like, is there actually a door, or is this purely just a trap? It was a trap. It seems to be, it seemed to be a trap. Okay. All right. Onward back. So, we're going all the way back to the split. <laughs> well, the split was just right here. Yeah. Did you... If I can move myself off the wall. Ta-da. Okay. So we're going this way. Let's go. Alright, give me a perception check. That's better. Uh, let's see. 23. Nice. 23. So rounding this corner and coming down, you come to another crossroads. I say we keep going this way. So that's where I'm going. This way. Well. Mm. Left or right? Nope, this is your character. You, you, you are choose. you are the one leading. It is whichever you have a feel for, I think. Right. Right going. is where we what we have been doing previously. So Okay, I'm going to go this way. Do, 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 do. Tell me when I need to roll again. Following down to this area, you do see a small passage here that apparently, as you can tell, is a dead end. Um, okay. You do see another room here. I'm tired of these rooms. Okay, so I'm going to go to the room. As you enter into this room, you do find another sarcophagus. Um, several uh, broken jars lay among this smaller room. The smell of decay that you've come across in other rooms, uh, it's still permeable here, but not as bad as this appears to be yet another sealed sarcophagus. All right, I'm going to search the room to see if there is any other, like, door around here or anything that is of note. I'm not touching the sarcophagus. Investigation. Okay. Roll it. Oh, I just did it. Uh, well, that one's a 17. You don't find anything of interest other than what you're seeing before you. Small gla broken jars, uh, pottery strewn about everywhere, and this sealed sarcophagus. Ben, are you staying back that far? Uh, yes and no. Um, so I'm definitely lingering back. Um, 
I'm still maintaining line of sight on people, but um, at this point for Ben, uh, he's trying to work his way through the maze mentally and map it out as best he can. So as soon as there were signs of another sarcophagus, uh, Oliver follows in with the assumption that Hearth is not far behind. Yeah, I'm already up to the yep. sarcophagus. Push so it open. You're gonna you're gonna open this one. Yep. All right, both of you pushing together, very very similar to the uh, other sarcophagi. Um, I will not say sarcophagus. Um, <laughs> Breaking the amber and wax seal around the edge of this um, tomb, it begins to slide. As it does, Arth, you the a well, myth is, you see a skeletal hand come out. And it comes out with such force before the um, lid is even pushed back far enough for its hand to come out. It breaks fingers trying to come out um, with a natural one to attack you. <laughs> it, its arm is up to its elbow as it's starting to snarl and swipe at both you and Hearth. I will um, stop pushing and uh, I would like to, my purpose now would be to this thing is clearly uh, feral. I am going to just sacred flame it Yeah. Uh, repeatedly until uh, no, what does that look in, like? In, <laughs> intent of, of <laughs> laying to rest like the Oliver would grab his sword and like try and chop the arm off. I'm just, I'm just speaking my intention before we go forward with everything. I, yeah. I'm just saying I'm going to stop pushing and I'm I'm just going to. Helian, you walk up on this site as they are trying to push the lid off the sarcophagus. It's very similar to what they've been doing before. But, however, a skeletal ham hand, arm has now got up out of the sarcophagus up to its elbow and is now wiping at air trying to get to them. I high five it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so, sacred flame attack yeah, rolls, etc. Well, yes, it, it, has to make a, it has to make a saving throw. I didn't know if we were going into initiative. It, we we are not. This thing is, for lack of a better term, restrained. So anything right. you guys did, if you're going to put it out of its misery, we're not going to have the role okay. play in yeah. this combat. Um, over the course of the next minute, uh, with the combination of Oliver and Killian and Hearth you put to rest this tortured soul within the sarcophagus. Yeah, as soon as it stops moving, Oliver will continue to push right. the top the rest of the way off. You see a sight very familiar, except um, one arm has been free. The arm that was sticking out, swiping at you. It is another mummified corpse, similar to the ones that have been walking around. This one is leaking the black fluid into the bottom of the sarcophagus. Its legs and one arm are still bound to the bottom of the sarcophagi. Hey, Ben, you need a hand? <laughs> Gesture towards the hand. <laughs> so, they created these by pouring this liquid into it. It would seem something to that effect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Clear. We are heading back the way we came. Through this course. I want to make sure, Bill, that this is a dead end. It does appear to be a dead end. Sorry, y'all. Y'all have y'all have an inquisitive rogue leading your party. I've got to go see if there's a door down there. <laughs> Check it. So, da -da -da. oh wait, I'm not supposed to be in this side. That's a fifteen. 
Um, you don't find any. You don't find any latches. Anything that's not similar to the dead ends you've come across before. Okay. Go back up. All right. So at this point, what is the party consensus? Where are you going? Oliver would duck his head here at this split. There is still more this way. If I feel like we're headed back towards where we came from. I do not know where we are in this place. I just know this is somewhere that we have not been before. So. Every time it seems like we say we're going back to where we came from, we find... We keep finding more things that we have not yeah. seen before. So. Yeah. Um. I... Hmm. If we find our way back to the beginning, then we have found our way back to the beginning. But I see no reason not to continue to look down this path. Okay. Okay. I was like, so I guess I'm going to peer down, start going down this way, Bill. Okay. As you peer down and you come this way. You come to another cross section and you see another room. Yeah, definitely here. haven't seen that before. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm gonna go to the door. So, as you come to this door, Larissa, you're not a hundred percent sure what you're looking at. This room is different from the other rooms. This one looks to be a shrine. Um, there are etchings and carvings that were in the walls, but it looks odd to you. You can't put your finger on it. Are those the same tentacle-like creatures in the front? Yes. Um, who's the closest behind me? Oliver would have been following, uh, having yeah. having ushered everyone kind of like to continue this path. Oliver definitely would have been towards the front. Like, so, uh, Oliver, this. Looks like a shrine, but I can't put my finger on it. It looks it starts, off. It looks different, doesn't it? I I do not know what this all is, but uh, Ben Killian, though yeah, this I'm seems gonna... more your area. Earth, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna step in and see this figure. The eternal dreamer and see this shrine Arth, go as soon as you step in you know what this is because you're forge born are living creatures for lack of a better term you have an arcane soul or archon soul you have emotion the object in your chest that functions as a heart cracks and breaks at the sight of what you see this was once a shrine to the everlight that has now been desecrated and turned into a shrine of the dreamer Ugh, big oof dude Woof. Woof. Ben looks in and sees what's going on and goes, shit. The flames inside Hearth begin to hum louder and you begin to see a glow rise up. Ben takes a step shit. back. In and out. <laughs> and then it subsides as I go up and read. If it, is this on actually on this table? Is there a you you do see a disc? A it's you see an item, uh, a stone carving that's separate from the table. It's just sitting on this stone dais. Mm -hmm. Underneath the stone dais, as you guys look, there's rolls of parchment that are stacked on top of each other. Um, in front of you, the on the table was once a manuscript of some type but it's aged the the ink is gone you can't make it out the stone figure above you um you've seen it before you've seen something similar it's a divine relic of um it's a simple disc that sets on a little handle 
it's like a little statuette. It's very similar. It's been used by the Everlight before. Usually they are um, symbols of mercy or symbols of... Uh, they're enchanted with various different items. But this disc set in the middle of this profane temple before you. I'm going to take the candle. Actually, are these candles on the floor as well? Yes. Remnants. I mean, they're not lit. Not lit no, no, but... not, not lit, no. I am going to take the wax, um, the hard tallow wax. I'm going to say to the rest of the group, this was a shrine. To the Everlight in my time. It seems that they have tried to push out the light with the presence of this eternal dreamer. And as I take this wax, I'm just going to write the prayer that I spoke earlier. All it, up and down these statues of darkness and the void will swallow all but for the light that shows their shadows. Actually, just that part I'm going to write up and down these statues. I'm going to set the candle down on the table and I'm going to take this centerpiece and remove it. Okay. This disc. As you guys see, Hearth is just starting to scribble on all these statues. Um, Ben, roll me a perception. Oh, beautiful. Natural 20. Nice. The scroll. Do, 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 five. The, the scrolls that you see, the, 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 the binding of the parchment um, that's shoved kind of stacked storage style at the underneath this altar where Hearth is, a couple of things pop into mind. One, regular parchment would have done the way of the manuscript or anything like that. They, yeah. it, it would have faded away. This parchment, that's spellbook parchment. Yeah. That's about 200 gold worth of spellbook parchment. Uh, so... As after uh, you have had your moment, uh, because that Ben was waiting. So if there's anything else Hearth needs to do, wants no. to do, etc. Once once that centerpiece is gone, and the uh, statues have been uh, summarily um, let's say uh, illuminated or uh, <laughs> defaced. Uh, to the pan weir, probably, then I'm going to step back. Um, at the end, I think we can use some of this. And you see just a, a inkling of that like scholar curiosity that Ben lets up with often. Uh, and so not wanting to come into the shrine because it kind of gives him the, the spoopies. Uh, ben leans his staff up against the wall and uh, kind of brings his hands up like this, and the parchment starts moving out one at a time, drifting out and forming a stack. Do any of them appear to have anything written on them, or does it just appear to be like component? It's yeah. The the basically what I'm telling you is this 200 gold worth of components for uh, copying his spells. Beautiful. Uh, it seems so... it seems to be also a component storage shelf. Okay. Uh, so very much like what you would imagine, uh, like Harry Potter movies, Ministry of Magic. Like all of this paper just starts shuffling across <laughs> with mage hand and stacking itself up and collecting. And I will gather whatever is there. It's a lot. It's going to take a lot of space. 
do 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 do. So is it more than just parchment? Like, are there other spell component things there, or it's just the parchment? Okay, it's cool. the rich parchment that when it when it describes in the PMG that you have to have it to copy spells. It's that. Cool. The expensive stuff. Uh, uh, so I will once again summon back my my chest, and that stack just kind of slides down. Um. How big is your chest? <laughs> Giggity. Um, <laughs> so I already have 110 gold worth of that. Uh, let me... I don't have that spell prepared. Hang on just a second. Be right back. Yep. Uh, it is 12 cubic feet of material. Okay. So with um with everything that's in your chest right now, um that we talked about, it's getting pretty full. Yeah. With, I, with... I mean just the armor alone, the chain mail I added in there, I figure it was getting close to topping it off. Mm -hmm. Um I'm running out of room, but I think I can make this fit just barely. It is not a bag of holding. <laughs> no. It is limited space. Yes. I have a, a list that I'm keeping track of. It's on my character sheet, the equipment. I just make a note on anything that's in the chest so I can just see it at a quick glance. <clears throat> I wish D&D &D Beyond had a feature to where you could put a bag of holding in your items. And you can place items in the bag of holding, and it takes their size and account, and that it will tell you when a bag of holding is full. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing would be nice for sure. Mm -hmm. So, Ben and Killian together stack this parchment into his chest. Um, Hearth, this disc is—it's pretty large. It's about the disc size is about this, and the the pommel that it sets on. It's made to set on a altar but it's also made to carry you very much have like a um, catholic monstrance kind of yeah set up mm -hmm. in, I was, in mind I was yeah struggling for the term thank yeah. you <laughs> being ra being raised as a good little catholic boy <laughs> um very much struggling for that term my, my grandmother's yelling at me from the grave right now um so what do we do Hearth, do you just wish to leave these statues as they are, or should we do more to prevent this from being? As I look up at them, they are now a part of this place. I do not know of anything to do with or to them that will set right what has been done. Let us move on. Very well. I'm going to keep going this way. Okay. So, Larissa. Where, um, Hearth, where are you in the party formation? Are you I... behind... I have been in the back with uh, Ben and the uh, and the Echo. Echo. Yeah. Echo. Okay. Larissa, I was trying to figure out what to call. I was like, I can't remember. Hmm. Moving forward, as you get to about right here, you notice right here one of Harsh's chalk outlines. Okay, we just came full circle. Okay. Heart. Hearth, mm -hmm. as you get actually no, never mind. Never mind, never mind that. Not yet. Okay. I will um down here too. Here 
you come across just another dead end. Okay. All right. So we're continuing. Mm -hmm. I think I'm keeping um, just marching order wise. I think I'm going to allow Ben to go in front of me so that I'm kind of keeping up a armored rear guard. Okay, so now we've come. Yeah, so long as you don't move more than like 30 feet back from where we're at, the echo is pretty well like established at the back so right. that Oliver can respond. Right. Wherever. But. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. If that's the case, I'll probably keep in front of. further to the front. So let us. So I can, we can find our way back to the middle, maybe. Mm hmm. So, if I can remember correctly, and Bill, tell me if I'm wrong, the middle's this way, where we yes. found the giant like. Yeah. If if you want to move your part, just if you want to move your party, give me a survival check, Larissa. <laughs> okay. Don't think I'm good at. It's a fifteen. Okay, with a couple of dips and dabs and. You do eventually, um, you are eventually able to move the entire party back to the center. And people are getting stuck. <laughs> okay. So when we went down this hall. <laughs> this is that is going on right now. I know, I just like, why? <laughs> and I was going to look at all of them and be like, we keep and... going. As you near the center of this maze and you come into this very familiar room, you see off to... Uh, why are you being so slow on me today? Parth, you enter in. You see one of the undead enter from this section. Before you know it, before any of you can react, it starts to moan and move forward. But Hearth, as it gets... Uh, about this far to you, it stops. Yep. And stops right there. And just kind of stands <clears throat> and stares at you for a moment. And then continues down this hall. Nice. Nice. It seems that they have a reaction to this. The guardian's heart, perhaps. Possibly. I'm gonna look at everybody and be like, "Which way?" When we went down this hall, there was another branch that went reference up on the screen, mm -hmm. or this one, but I don't know. I just feel like we're running in circles at this point. I know I no longer have that ability since I switched backgrounds, but is there any way I can investigate and see which way might lead us to, like, the heart of this place or where we need to go? Or Are, I, are we at the heart of this place? Everything yeah. keeps seeming to come back to here. here and he looks at hearth uh, have have we perhaps found what we need uh, what is this thing that you have found there i think that this is not our purpose in coming here since I've been marking pretty diligently, I'm going to try and deduce something in this direction. But there's got to be a bunch something we something that can make us that can let us go north. I don't think anything is Val. as hard. I'm going to say, I do not think that anything that will allow us to go forward will be 
in the directions that we have encountered. Perhaps there is still a way to continue going, and I'm going to point out north on the map to us. Okay. So I'm going to kind of like look around for... I think we did not pursue... If I'm remembering right, we didn't go this way or this way. This way. That is the way we haven't gone. Right. Okay. Oh, there was another split. We didn't go to this one, too. Yeah, this one's saying so, we didn't go here or here, right? Correct. Given where you've been and how you've been all over the place in this maze, I will, if you guys are going to set and discuss this, I will give a combined group survival check. Going by passes and fails. Okay. I mean, I'm down for that. The yeah. idea the idea is, if I get this correctly, is that you guys are wanting to go north. North on the map. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So give me a, a group combined survival check. Passes fail. All right. I'm going to use guidance on someone. 19. <laughs> you gotta be more specific than that. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I just mean, yeah. I'm trying to think. Oliver is a barbarian. He has survival. Oliver is pretty uh, decent at it. I'm about to say, I'm pretty decent at it. I'm I going don't. to uh, a, cast guidance on Ben. I've already rolled. Mm-hmm. Killing. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'd already rolled. Okay, okay. So, here we go. I'm going to. I'm going to. I know some of you have already called it out, so I'm going to go down the line. Um, Hearth. Eleven. Eleven. Oh. One failure. Killian. Uh, with the guidance, I got a nine. Nice. A nine? A nineteen. Nineteen. One oh. pass. Ben. Nineteen. Two passes. Oliver. Sixteen. Three passes. Larissa. 30-20. Nice. All right. So, having a group think and talking this out, the party uh, using, I'm going to use, since we're doing shared party vision, I'm going to grab Larissa. You guys, the group decides to go down this hall. As you do, you encounter several of the mummies that seem to, within, you determine within 30 feet of hearth, they seem to be held back. Some of them fight it, but eventually they do seem to go to another direction. Going forward, the party eventually finds the large bronze door. Bear with me as I move everybody over here because you guys have tons of party members, it <laughs> seems. Because, hey, look, there's all the familiars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dead at the moment, so you don't have to worry about her. So, you come to this large door. The door itself, very similar to the first door when you encountered inside the Heretic's Maze. Large motif carved inside this bronzed and tarnished door of tortured souls being drug up into the heavens by these tentacles that are piercing the sky. Inside this door... In the center, there's no handles, is a round hollow with a smaller round hollow in the center of it. Does it look to be about the size of the Guardian's heart? Does actually look to be. Ben, do you still have 
the the piece the heart Killian was gonna be like I don't know what Ben having to piss has to do with anything but <laughs> so when you say the guardian's heart are you referring to the physical core of the mechanical beast or the guardian's heart that uh, Parth is carrying around Which one does this hole look like it's the size of? It looks like the mechanical. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Okay, I'll do it. And I will insert the mechanical device into grabbing, it. grabbing the crystal and inserting the shaft of the mechanical device in. The crystal immediately, as it locks into place, you hear a chunk, and the crystal begins to glow and grow bright, brighter, and brighter, and brighter, and brighter until it's almost blinding. As you hear a chunk, and the door opens as the door opens and we see what's inside I go ah shit yeah holding this and moving forward I'm going to step inside as you step inside hearth Hold on one second. This chamber before you is home to two large statues of profane gods. Um, ben, you see these? Yo, roll me a Yog Sothri check. I'm proficient in that. <laughs> because you're the only one proficient in it. I think I am. Oh. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm, half, I'm half proficient. I'm a bard. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you heard about it once. You stayed at a holiday in the last day. Uh, Seventeen. Oh. Hitting the DC right on the nail of the head because it was a DC of seventeen. Standing before you is an image of the elder evil Shub Negaroth, the mother of aberrations and beasts. Deity of change and mutation. That's very specific. It must be Catholic. Right? There's a there's a patron saint for everything. I Hmm. That is the mother of monsters. I'm going to start moving off to the left here. I do not mm. dare say their name. This is... This... Is this more of what we think was changed of this place or something with what it originally was this is not is the material different than the physical structure it seems to be made of the same stone basalt. yeah okay. basalt purple stone this is not original. This is different. I dare not speak their name. Well, I'm gonna come over here and look into this hallway or this door. As you guys are just going ahead and moving around. <laughs> I know. Um, you look into this room, uh, Larissa. What you see in here is a workshop an arcane-like workshop, a crumbling 
st- scrolls and books, chemicals abound throughout this. And on this workbench is a tome, a tome that's apparently not touched by time, setting open. Ben? Yes? There's a book here that's not withered. It looks like one of your books. Okay, and going to Hearth, um, Hearth, on your side, you see this room is a wash of tables. One wall is nothing but a row of chains. No bodies are bound to them. You see more of the iron pots, some full, some empty. Um, more of those brass and tin funnels caked in remnants of this black liquid. Uh, this room is just filled with tools of embalming and chains and manacles and, em- and empty canopic jars ready for new inhabitants. Okay. I'm going to just spend some time searching through the contents of the room and I will call as I hear Ben be called by Larissa I'm going to say Killian would you assist me if I may the exact same moment Hearth says Killian so does Ben Killian there's oh he um okay (laughs) Much in demand. <laughs> Why don't you go help Lewis and I'll see what he wants. Okay. So, Ben, as you walk in here, you identify instantly of what this is. This is a mage's laboratory, or the remnants of one. Yeah. That spark of curiosity peeks back up in Ben's eyes. Um... Just to be safe, uh, hang on, and I'm going to step back out of the room and spend a moment focusing uh, my energy and uh, over the course of the next 10 minutes, virtually cast Detect Magic and not touch anything until I have. Okay. Um, Within 30 feet of you, let's see. If you want to cut over to them while... Hold on. I'm just seeing what's in 30 feet of you. Okay. Over to Hearth and Killian. I think a keener eye will help me determine some of the contents in this room. Um, Uh, With your experience as an archaeologist, you have come across embalming chambers um, several times, especially studying Arcadian ruins. Um, typically they're done. One thing's hitting you as different. It's on the wall. Arcadian embalming chambers are a temple of reverence. It's a way to mourn the dead. This one appears to be a way to torture the living. These creatures, these people, these mages that were punished and locked away in this place were embalmed alive. Uh, well, I uh, kind of like look around, look at the instruments. Um, Hearth, I know you know about uh, ancient Arcadian embalming techniques, uh, techniques, I'm sure. Um, this is a little different. It's like these guys, uh, well, they weren't dead when they started embalming. Let's just say that. This was no... I agree. This is this was no means to prepare the dead. It was a means to imprison them. Yeah. So I'm going to start looking through these shelves to see if there's anything of use to us. Yeah, yeah I'll, look, I'll look at them as well. Basically, what you're seeing is you're seeing a storage shelves for the supplies used in the embalming. Um, You see aged wrapped linen, jars of long-ago hardened resin that was used, 
empty jars of the black liquid that you've come to know. Full jars, sealed, of the black liquid you've come to know. Um, various tools that are now obviously decayed and decrepit with time. Um, empty canopic jars waiting to be uh, housing new organs of the victims, sad to say, of this, embo- of this torturific embalming chamber. Okay, so we'll be looking around if there's any, uh, if, if that's all there is to be found uh, without any checks, I'm good to go. Okay. Yes, back, back to Ben and Larissa. Um, ben, the magic that is coming off of um, this, the book itself obviously is is giving off some mild enchantments mainly to do um very similar to the spell book that you have that keeps it from aging from normal yeah um you do find um not really any more magical items or things of magic coming from this room I was more, uh, you know, that film with Salt of Mage in his tower kind of idea, just stepping out to cast the spell just to be sure I wasn't setting off a trap before I set in, stepped in. Um, as far as you know, you have not. Um, you do find near the book on the same work table six vials of a pinkish liquid that are organized and stacked uniformly with each other. They're the same vial, about yay big, with a waxed cork stopper, and they're each set together beside the book. Interesting. Um, uh, I will use May Chance to flip the uh, book closed. Actually, just to lift it a little bit, just to make sure it doesn't set off any uh, any sort of wards or anything. Okay. And if nothing happens, I'll venture over and peer at the book. Okay, as you lift the book, it does have a scripture written in ancient Arcadia on the cover. What's it does have... Um, Zaquid Arcana, the Book of Punishments. This is fine. It's all good. I do not repeat that out loud. Uh, just kind of like eyes get wide. I'll look into the opened page. What do I see in the open page? Um, you see not really a spell, but the we looking at the pages, um, the book describes rites and rituals for the punishment of heretics against the Tan Weir. It describes the force feeding of a chemical substance called Gorgondy that upon force on a believer of the prime god, this chemical would open their minds to the teachings of the Alcadema. I immediately look at Oliver. How do you feel? I'm fine. That's as far as I know. Don't drink that liquid again. I wasn't <laughs> planning on it necessarily. <laughs> I wasn't really planning on it the first time. <laughs> the Do you continue to read? Yes, however, I'm going to preface that with if I feel the slightest inkling of something crawling up my spine, I stop. Okay. As you begin to read further, 
the book goes to describe in detail these rituals of punishment towards these heretics. Um, those that are fed, force-fed this chemical, their attitudes should begin to change and become more favorable to the elders or the gods that came before. Those that resist and die while being force-fed this will rise as a servant of the elders. Once again, I look at all of her. It and goes you're on. Sure you're fine. <laughs> It goes on to describe beings that are being t held in prisons of flesh to never be allowed to return to their gods, imprisoned with flesh-eating insects for centuries to be devoured only to heal again in A I'm forever facts to a, a Star Wars character here. <laughs> to forever be tortured and devoured and never die. Do you have a write up of this? Like in detail? In, if you don't, that's fine. I'm just trying to take notes and I'm getting shook if as I do. <laughs> It also contains several spells. Um, and knowing Ben, all of them are necromantic. This is a necromantic spell book. I was like, ooh. And now you're like, ooh. <laughs> We're done, uh, Ben. -a. Asked Oliver if he's okay. Loris is just gonna like scan him and like make sure he's not growing another arm. <sighs> uh, beard's just slowly turning into tentacles. Yeah. Beauty. Uh, um, as you go in, you do find eventually a recipe for Gorgondy in the back, a uh, ritual of its creation. The if it lists various alchemical um, herbs that you're familiar with and the brewing of potions and everything, basic stuff. But the main ingredient is something you never heard of called milk of the mother. Ugh. Gross. Why's it gotta be gross? I don't look at the, that's, that's, that's the page is moist too. Gross. <laughs> This is a lot. Hey. Mm. At this point, probably would have made would have made my way all the way across the time. Yeah. Uh, see what's happening in here, and I might very much, depending on the amount of time we've spent just kind of read over the shoulder just to see like as hearth comes through place. and oliver's like only half paying attention to ben just kind yeah. of like keeping an eye on things and was what did you find on the other side was there any other doors or anything supplies for embalming hmm no. turned off her and be like it looks like the only it's passage not. maybe here and the one in the main room it is not embalming, it is torture and conversion. That black liquid. And I look up at uh, Oliver. Is I think what they describe here as Gorgondi. It opens your mind. To the Elder Gods. I'm gonna look at all of her and be like, well, maybe his and ancestors. You will, and you will either be swayed or enslaved. Maybe all of her ancestors are protecting him. I really hope so. 
The rest of the book goes in to explain torture methods against the faithful, the Alcadima, and those uh, opposed to the Tanwir, and uh, this milk of the mother, and I'll point that passage out, is included. Uh, we've heard of the mother and the father before. Um, this statues in the front, and from Piccolo or his simulacrum. These are worth a great deal of money, but I question the value of providing these to someone. And I point at the vials if these are what I think they are. <sighs> this book is evil. It is enchant enchanted to protect it from time, but this is evil. Uh, did the enchantment look identical to the one on my spellbook? It, it's the basic enchantment on most spellbooks. Okay, so it is not a, an enduring spellbook. It is just a protected from time. Yeah. So I think I can light it on fire. In theory, yes. This book should be burned. And I am not one to say that very often. I want to thumb through the pages a bit myself. This you... Conversation is going on. As you're thumbing through the pages... Um... It's... Roll a perception check. Twelve. Twelve. Um... You find a passage where it describes a Justicar that was brought to the island. But there's no real detail. Yeah, I'm gonna probably search the surrounding pages for any more, but it's probably exactly as you say. Well, but 12, you don't see anything. I... How big is this book? Like, are we talking a thick-ass tome? Or are we talking... About like... the, about the, it's a little bigger than your spell book, yeah. More of a reverent, not a carry-around piece, more of okay. a keep-in-the-temple type of thing. Okay, so I have two books in my dimensional pocket, in my okay. carry-on. I have the Book of Ivan, and I have my spell book. Do I think I could fit this in that? Um, in yeah, you think so, but it would be you're talking about your dimensional pocket, the Bellathon's locker. Yeah. Yeah, it would be full though. Okay. I mean the only other thing that ever goes into it is the the replica of the chest, but I usually keep that in my coat pocket. Um you like a dimensional pocket and a dimensional pocket? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's like a flame of fire there. Turtles, I... turtles all the way down. Sorry. What could go wrong? Not a Justicar. I used the wrong word. I forgot my own word. An al -Qadi. Yeah, al -Qadi. Yep, Justicar would have been... Um... The same thing. Street yeah. judge. Uh, yeah. I... I think we should take this just to make sure there's no further information in it, but I do not it's just like the other book you have seen me thumb through. It makes me nervous. I will be happy to look through it at a later day. It has information that I might seek. As you see, Barth is like more animated searching through parts of these pages once this passage is noticed. I could keep it safe 
uh, in an extra dimensional space, or I can just put it in my bag, but... It can be like, you could always put it in my extra bag. We'll fill this up, and then if we need overflow, we'll go to you. And I will, uh, my hand waves across a, a rip in time and the fabric of reality, and I reach the book in there and close it. And then I take the, the vials and I stick them in my bag. Okay. What is the rest of the party doing? Uh, Oliver is mostly keeping an eye out in case any wandering anything finds its way in or appears as a danger. Um, I just kind of on guard. Can I examine this next set of doors? In well, the actually, patient? if Killian was heading up there, Oliver would probably like kind of wander that direction as well. It's the same relief but it's a smaller door than what you've seen and upon closer examination there is an arcane lock on this door i'm in the door not not in the room with them but in the larger room yeah, yeah. on the larger okay. door okay well um i look at oliver i could take care of that lock but uh rest a little bit he is Perhaps not until we are sure we are ready to move on. But good to know. Uh, perhaps if we can close the other doors behind us, we could manage to get a bit of rest here. We have already rested briefly, and I have exhausted my ability to recharge in that state. Um... Yes, I, I mean perhaps a little longer. Uh, this is not a place where you rest. And he kind of looks towards the statues. I'm not talking about like like overnight. I'm talking about like give me a, an hour to recharge a bit and then I should be able to cast some spells. Um, I think your abilities may be better suited for the combative sense. Uh, it may be better for me to do this. Oh, regardless, I... I'm regardless. I'm pretty drained as it is. A short time then. Bill, is this a like a closet? You don't know. It has etchings and drawings on that small door. Um, not similar to the tentacle ones that you've seen before, but these these drawings are that of a uh, reverence of service of um the the traditional like you would see in egypt of offering of plates carvings <laughs> do you want me to open it i think we should listen to gillian yeah I think it may be best if we rest for a little bit. And we are kind of coming up to our hard cutoff. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping to push past just to get one more story plot in before. I mean, if we want to quickly short rest, if you want to push past, we can. Let's... Yeah. I mean, if you guys are going to take a one hour short rest, go ahead. I'm literally just getting it, to get, doing it to get my packed slots back. So. That short um, rest helps Oliver significantly so you uh, with the going around investigating and taking seats and reading and everything that you guys have been doing now it's not been combat i will get i will gladly say that you guys can take a short rest okay great and comp use... encompassing everything that's going on right now i will use oh. one hit die to recover one hit point bringing me back to maximum <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm at max. I don't use any hit die. Uh, I am going to use the last of my barbarian hit die to max myself back out anyway. I took three of them, though. 
I'm a little worried about what we may find in here. And I am not exactly a combatant. Well, most things die when you shoot it with magical bullets, so I'm not worried. <laughs> I don't have those. Um, I, I like kind of like I kind of like throw my coat back and you see like rows of different colored bullets like around my like chest and waist. I got you yeah. covered. And then and uh I also say to Ben, I say we also have an Oliver. And then look over. <laughs> it is true. And give a little wave. And I come with many. And he just kind of like looks around like he's looking at various things. Look at his echo. <laughs> yeah, whatever that means. You're not alone. <laughs> Would you like me to break the seal? With door. I don't know what Ben to... taking a piss has to do with it. But <laughs> yeah. Again, Call back. <laughs> again with Ben taking a piss. <laughs> do we wish to check the small door first or just push on? I am fine with moving forward. Let's stick with the devil we know, yes? Mm. And I'll move out towards the main. So, before you stands a smaller version of the entry door, with tentacles coming down, reaching up and pulling the tortured souls into the heavens. Um... Focusing my mind, uh, once again, I'll reach out and rotate my hands and uh, turn back the time of the spell to a point where it was merely potential and cast Dispel Magic. Let's do the time warp again. The That's spelling, <laughs> the magic on the lock, you see a of the magical potential dissipate and break away leaving I, an unlocked door purely thematically um i focus on that potential and you all see just a little bit of green energy swirl and then go into ben's fingertips like electricity um okay Let's killian, ro killian roll me a perception check real quick 19. 19. Um, cast the side over here. You see, yet again, the normal wax cover lock that would show that a door was not open inside a tomb cast aside and laying. We're not the first ones that have been here. Fair warning. Oh, did. And I'm going to hold an Eldritch Blast for any threats that we might perceive as the door opens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will hold a Mind Sliver as well. The door opening before you is a large chamber with a sarcophagus. Larger sarcophagus up on a dais. The sarcophagus itself is carved with intricate depictions of writhing tortured bodies as a decrepit and decayed carpet leads up uh, around the sarcophagus though is something unique that you guys have never seen before etched into the ground around it is part of a runic circle with the sarcophagus at the center. the As soon as you walk in, it smacks you that this does not belong. This has never been here. This was not intentional. This has been added. The Give me an Arcana check, Ben. And I as well? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, 26. Oh, damn it. 12. <laughs> You are looking at something that you can't, for the life of you, when you see it, you can't understand it. This is something that should not be. This is something that wasn't even theorized by the Arcadians at the height of their magical technology. But 
thinking that this has to be something from the future of knowledge that man has never had, you realize that it's older. This is actually... This looks to be the ground workings of possible creation magic. To the point that the reason you feel this way, this is part of a whole. This is two arcane traditions, arcane circles laid on top of each other with a formulaic bridge bridging two schools of magic into one. You see a arcane circle of conjuration on top of a arcane circle of necromancy. Binding a portal, or at least part of a portal, to the life force of a creature. Hmm. The GM in the back of my head is going, ooh. <laughs> but with a 27. It's Conjuration and what was the other? Necromancy. Necromancy. With a 27 being so high, this is not complete. But it's functioning, which means possibly this is connected to other circles, such as this somewhere. In the interest of time, uh, shblah, all that. Um, as he's describing this, Larissa, something hits you as very familiar to all of this as he describes a portal to another realm being bound to the life force of an entity. You've encountered that before. Yeah, the Arcane Grey, right? The creature that lived within the Arcane, Gra Arcane Grave, experimenting as a way to go home to the Far Realm, bound a door to the Far Realm to a creature that had to be slain for it to be closed. And that the angelly creature. Well, it was a star vamp. It was a um, star vampire. But yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As this happens, Parth, as Ben is doing this, there's something that draws your eye. There is an Arcadian inscription on the side of this tomb. I'm going to read it. I have one question, real quick, just to check something for Oliver because he's pretty much standing back from everything else. Are his, is anything reacting from his gauntlets or anything in this area? Your gauntlets are slowly starting to beat. Hearth, on the side of this inscription, as Ben is frantically going through a description of the arcane powers that you guys are seeing, you begin to read in your head this epitaph that's on the side of this sarcophagus above you. It says, False master, oh, sorry. <clears throat> False master sent to us to subjugate. She was judged by those that came before. Defiant and unmoving, he refused to see the truce. Broken and bound, cursed to never be embraced by her god. Tortured for all eternity, she is the heretic, the non-believer, the bringer of the corrupted justice. May she never know true death. Here lies the last heretic of fallen Arcadia, al Qadi Asha. May she never know peace. Fuck. As I read that, as I read that, all of you see the blue light within hearth begin to beat and erupt and shake and I immediately utter the words darkness and the void will swallow all before the light shows their shadows and spirits erupt out of me and circle this space surrounding us everyone around us 
and I say, we must open this. And that is where we'll leave it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I know. I'm like, what? Yes. <laughs> as soon as you start describing that circle, I was like, oh shit. I was like, oh, I know this. No. I know. I was like, no, no, not another one of those. No, it almost killed me last time. <laughs> that was three oh. levels ago, though. <laughs> That is where we will call today. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, all of you that have stuck with us today. Um, one of our traditions is we give accolades to our players. So since we do have a hard cutoff time and we do have one of our players that has a very busy day after this, we'll go ahead and go into it. Um, everybody roll off. This who goes first. I, uh, Nat. Nat 20. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I also net, but oh, roll, roll up again. one. No, 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 oh, okay. no. Mine never, never mind. One. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fifteen for me. Fifteen. Eight. Ben's dice are finally doing him some justice. Hmm. Art, what was yours? Mine was uh, ten. Okay, so Killian, you get to go first. Yeah, so uh, mine goes to Hearth. Um, that ending part was super cool, but the thing that stuck in my mind was when you said that prayer earlier over the sarcophagus. I thought that was really, really cool. So, nice job, man. Okay, um, next with uh, 15, I believe, is um, Ben. Oh, man, so many good things. Um Man, I really think Hearth stole the show today. Um, uh, the, the it was just one thing after another. The not willing to let go of the bodies and insistence on giving them peace and um, and just the like simmering rage underneath the era of, of the air of peace and calm that you would outwards was just so cool. So that not really one individual thing today, but that just hearth in my opinion stole the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. And um, yeah, that, that would be it? yep. Okay, that would be you, uh, Trish, then Jacob. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to give mine to uh, for to Gabe for Ben. Uh, I really liked and appreciated the uh, the 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 weaving of the out of character understanding of the character into the in game play of allowing the story to be told from your character from your player perspective but also like through the it's the, the guiding hand of your player perspective through the actions and and existence of this character and i could see the wheels turning in your head of of exactly what to use what to leave in what to leave out and i always love seeing players uh seeing players do that all this eagerness and then at the same time the deliberate resolution and choices that you actively make as a as a as a player for your character so thanks man well done yeah it has been hard to play the last couple of sessions so it's been mm -hmm. wonderful <laughs> all right um trish i was needed um i don't know it's really but Clean hearth just because that last that last little bit and then like refusing to give up like even though he knew time after time after time um that exactly what he was gonna find he went through it and then man bill i don't know any other story that could have caused as much emotional <laughs> trauma but it was <laughs> and it was amazing it was it was amazing um just the descriptions and uh, the whole story as a whole today, it was just really good. Okay, Jacob? I Kind of as the last one here, I'm going to take a little bit of a cop out uh, and kind of spread this to, to everybody. Like, I felt like everybody did such a good job of having a different feel and personality to how they were approaching this area. 
the stoicism and like determination of hearth to try and make this right uh, Killian's like excitement to explore but also like cautious of the dangers uh, of what was going on Ben with everything that Ben has been dealing with um, and how he had uh, approached a day of like trying his best to push onward through it and and like seeing those glimpses of Ben trying to get himself towards a like a, a resolved state uh and uh larissa with you know taking the lead of investigating through things despite the roles being against you but like taking the lead as we were in through all of it and, and honestly bill like the whole area the maze the map everything the the conclusion of what we came to at the end of the day like i just all of it all of you all you peoples everybody gets all it i get the feel um <laughs> I'm actually torn um, with my GM's uh, inspiration because between Ben and uh, Hearth, so I'm going to ask which one of you has <laughs> a um, inspiration point. I do not. I, I do not. Okay. So so. Makes so. A decision. Uh, suck it, DM. You got to pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I vote these both get it because yeah, that's what I vote. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> you know I'll what? Play, I'll you, play that card. I'll be that given guy. I, given I know what you guys are about to go into, sure. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Damn black. Yup. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, oh, man. with that being said, uh, those of you that participated in our giveaway, thank you very much. Um, please tune in. Uh, our next shows, uh, keep watch on our Twitter. Um, we will announce next Tuesday on the 18th whether we are going to do a shooting the crit or, I don't know, Gabe and I might stream us playing Destiny. <laughs> um, <laughs> we we um, skipped our last ones. We will we will try our best yeah, to, yeah, uh, to make will, sure we, we get will, something on there, even if it's just popping on and hanging out with folks a bit. Yeah, and definitely tune in on the 25th, which is Tuesday. That will be our next episode of Thrain, our other ongoing serial campaign run by Gabriel um, in a homebrew world such, you know, very similar to mine and you know, how mine is a homebrew world. Um, so, pay, you know, that is... I always screw up in time zones because I'm in a different time zone than you guys. That is seven. Eastern Standard, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, on the 25th will be the next episode of Thrain, followed by now that they have stepped from the Heretic's Maze into the Heretic's Tomb. Mm. Mm. On the 29th, we will be having our next episode of breakfast and dragons please come here for exciting conclusion of this dungeon um which will be nine eastern standard time here on forever uh forever dms twitch and please follow us on twitter at the forever dms um love you guys this is awesome we we do this for us but we do it for viewers as well um so we hope to see you then thanks for hanging out with us today everybody Bye, guys.